Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Be Yourself. This is Dr. Nisharma and today I'm going to deal with pedigree analysis. This is a very easy topic. Once you get understood uh, the uh, trick behind this analysis, but people generally uh, feel difficulty in the, in the analysis of pedigree because they don't have the clinical concept or some logics used for the pedigree analysis. So in this section, I will going to discuss about all those. The anyone who is having problem in English can switch to Hindi language from the link which I have given in the description box. So let's start. Before starting, I would like to introduce we with you with some of the symbols which are used during the pedigree analysis. For example, here round circle we represent the female, uh, square, male, and the line in between these two represents the mating in between male and female. And if we have some such types of graphs, a tree like graphs, it represent on the by the mating of this uh, male and female, we have the three ch children of which first is female, uh, girl child, second is the boy, and again third is the girl child. This rectangular and this two circle represent, and here the square also represent both of these represent monozygotic twins or identical twins. Now, on the other hand, if we have the dark filled uh, circle or a square, it represents the affected individuals and if a dot in between them represents the carrier or of a sex linked resistant, uh, recessive. And uh, if we have a line across this symbol, then it represents the death. And uh, if there is no line in between this as unlike this one, then it represents the dizygotic twin. These three represent the dizygotic twins. And the last one having the double line in between these two symbols represent the consanguineous marriage. So let's begin. Uh, there are some expected patterns of the various types of inheritance in the pedigree. So let's discuss one by one all those so that uh, once uh, you know the all the expected patterns for that inheritance, you can easily analyze the pedigree. So here first comes the autosomal recessive inheritance. What does it mean? Autosomal recessive inheritance means the person will be or the individual will be affected only when they have the both homozygous recessive conditions. Okay, so here uh, the dark circle, dark filled square represents the affected one. So it is having the genotype of uh, homozygous recessive one. And now here in these conditions, there can be two possibility as this is autosomal recessive. So when uh, the genotype will be in the heterozygous condition. On that condition also, this female will be the phenotypically normal, but we can say that it will be the carrier. So suppose uh, this female can have either homozygous uh, dominant alleles or it can be the heterozygous conditions. So let's take first conditions when they are the homozygous dominant. And that condition when we cross the female with the homozygous dominant with the affected male sorry uh, my symbol uh, with affected male then we will get the progeny as all will be here we can see here all will be the heterozygous carriers it means now here also from this analysis we have seen that all are ha having the uh, phenotypically normal and it will be unaffected or phenotypically normal but are the carrier but the conditions when the female will be having the heterozygous condition on that case let's see what we will get we will get capital a small a small a small a capital a small a small a small a it means there must be some of its progeny would be affected but here we can see that neither of the six seven eight are affected so this progen uh, this genotype will be in the homozygous uh, dominant condition now if we will see here the autosomal recessive inheritance what we will find here uh, it sometimes skip the generations or uh, first character about this is that it may skip the generation or we can see when uh, the uh, one where there is a mating between the affected male or female and because it is a not sex link so any of these uh, either female or uh, either male will be affected and 
if any of the female i met or its mating partner will be uh, having the homozygous condition of uh, a dominant allele on that condition uh, neither of its office ring will be affected all will be the normal one but when it will marry again to an affected person here we know we have here seen that when the heterozygous conditions have met it with the homozygous uh, homozygous recessive condition on that case we have the 50% chances of effective affected uh, progeny and 50% chances of having the carrier and from the result also we got that here is the 50% affected and 50% unaffected so typically normal but it will be in the heterozygous state while this is the in the homozygous recessive state which is the which is our the point of discussion okay next move when uh, any uh, heterozygous condition is met with the normal phenotypically normal one then what will happen suppose here we can also then again state that it will be either in the homozygous state or in the heterozygous state because it is phenotypically normal so both of the condition can be possible but here one of the children is affected and in the first condition what we have seen when it will be in the homozygous condition on that case none of the offspring uh, will be affected but here as one of the offspring is affected having the homozygous recessive allele it means that this male will be having a heterozygous uh, allele okay so now in this way we are the first uh, expected patterns for the autosomal recessive inheritance is that it may skip the generations and if both the parents here again the uh, condition is when both the parents here male and female are affected when both the females or we can say when both have the homozygous state recessive state on that case obviously all of its progeny will also be affected and uh, sometime most of the unaffected next condition is that if most of the uh, if here we have seen that both of the parent are unaffected but their children may have the chances of effectiveness and as it is the autosomal inheritance there is a no difference between the effectiveness in the male and female it means both male and female has the equal chances to be affected so this is the uh, conditions or these are the properties where which uh, we have to deal with when uh, such pedigree analysis is there and uh, the conditions which if this will prevail here then that types of inheritance will be the autosomal inheritance now move to the next next point if the autosomal dominant inheritance will be there it means that in the autosomal dominant form what will happen the affected person may have that this alleles or may be in the heterozygous form in the both condition as it is the autosomal dominant one so in the both of this condition the uh, the individual will be affected and as this is unaffected it means that here we can say that this may have the alleles of small a small a in this condition what will happen then again we can say that this individual or this male may have either in the homozygous dominant state or in the heterozygous dominant state let's see the first first conditions when the male is in homozygous dominant state on that case it has met it with the normal female it means that it is in the homozygous recessive state so we get the offspring as here all are affected as it is the dominant autosomal so here the dominant character will be expressed in all of the progeny but here if you will see here that this progeny is not affected this is having the homozygous recessive state it means this parent will be having a heterozygous alleles or we can see that when we will cross with the heterozygous and the homozygous recessive one sorry here a small a small a Uh, homozygous recessive one then we will get 50% of the individual as affected and 50% of the individual may not be affected or the normal had homozygous recessive conditions so it means this parent will be in the heterozygous state now this way we can analyze here the autosomal dominant inheritance so the first uh, property related with this 
autosomal dominant inheritance is that they may not escape the any of the generations here you have seen that in all the generation in 2 and 3 both of the, in both of the generations the progeny are affected but unlike this in the autosomal recessive condition what happened in here in the generation number 1 and in generation number 2 the progeny of 1 and 2 in the generation uh, sorry this 2 and this is 3 in progeny 3 which are the progeny of uh, 1 and 2 here 6 7 and 8 were unaffected it means autosomal recessive can escape the generation but autosomal dominant will not escape the generation next point is that an affected person affected person medic with an unaffected person should have approximately 50 person uh, affected in the offspring as we have seen here that there may be possibility if it will be in the heterozygous condition then on that case the 50% uh, of offspring will be affected and 50% will not be affected okay next uh, analysis about the expectation is about the autosomal dominant is that uh, the distribution of alleles in both the sexes will be equal it will not be as it is autosomal it will not influence the any particular sex so uh, this were all about the autosomal dominant inheritance let's move toward the sex linked dominant inheritance here it is the sex in, 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 uh, dominant inheritance it which it means that this is x and x representing females and this is x and y and here the condition is a dominant inheritance then there can be two way where the female can be affected one condition will be that when only one of the gene is carrying the uh, let's represent it with a dominant a uh, capital a one only one of the chromosome is having the dominant alleles and the second condition is that either of or both of the chromosome is carrying the dominant alleles in the both of the conditions female will be affected and male will be affected when there will be a y now let's take, uh, take the first condition when female is having the one chromosome uh, chromosome is having the disease allele on that case when it will meet with the normal male on that case what will happen what will be the types of offspring here here a x x a uh, sorry x x x a y and x y now here we have seen that uh, of the two female well, one is affected one is normal likewise here fem uh, one of the male is affected and other male is unaffected so uh, from this uh, pedigree also we have seen that one male is affected and one female is here affected and uh, also here one uh, male is not affected and here also one male, female is also not affected so this will be having the uh, this heterozygous condition of the uh, sex linked dominant inheritance so uh, what will happen when both of the chromosome will be carrying the disease alleles on that conditions when we will meet with the normal male on that case we will have sorry uh, x a x x a x x a y and x a y on that condition all will have been affected so here as only two only 50 percent of the person is affected it means that this female is carrying the uh, carrying uh this is allele on only one of its chromosome now move to the next point what will happen when male will be affected it means a male is affected and female is not affected it means female is having the normal xx as it we have also predicted from this cross and the, here the condition as male is affected so male will be having this genotype so when we will met with this two it will give x x and x a y and we will have x a x x a x x y normal here x normal so in the condition when in the case of sex link dominant inheritance in the condition when female uh, is normal and male is affected on that condition uh, there it will be not uh, uh, be affect will affect the male one as here we have seen there we have the normal genotype or the predictably normal 
male is here whereas female is affected because of its dominant linked inheritance sex yeah, sex inheritance so these are some points first point is that uh, the trait doesn't skip the generation here you have seen in the generation it is a one two and three in all the three here uh, the generation is not escaped affected male is when the condition when male is affected on that case only female will be affected uh, or the baby girl will be affected while their son will be normal the next point is about that when a uh, female is affected and male is normal and it is carrying uh, a gene alleles in only one of the eggs on that condition what will happen 50% of the progeny will be affected and 50% will be the normal so this with this are the some expected pattern for the sex link dominant inheritance next point is that when the sex link is or uh, is a recessive inheritance in this case what will happen here as it is a recessive inheritance and here male uh, is normal and female is affected then here without any doubt male is having both of the chromosome is having the gene for the disease and here male will be xy or the normal on that case what we will get x a x a and we, it will met with the normal male when in that case what will happen uh, we can see here that x a y and x a y all the male are only affected while female are normal and here also as it is the sex link character uh, though it's recessive it will only pass to the male only when uh, uh, when either female is carrier or the female is the affected one on that case what we will have what will happen here though it's the uh, females are phenotypically normal but it will be the carrier one okay so female are not affected because of this when only one of the parents is affected but when both of the parents will be affected on that case all of the progeny will be affected so the expected analysis for the sex link recessive inheritance is that when only one of the parent is affected on that case it will pass only to the male uh, offspring while female will be the carrier when both of the parents will be affected on that condition all of the progeny will be affected so this is how we can analyze it as one more analysis left here uh, when female is carrier and male is normal on that condition what we will get x a x x and y on that condition we will get x a x x x x y and x uh, sorry x a y and x y so here only one of the progeny is affected or we can say one fourth of the progeny is affected of which uh, female one female will be carrier and one female will be normal one and one male will be normal and this is also as per the this pedigree the analysis also we have seen here so when only uh, when both of the parent will be unaffected then ca there can be chances that their offspring will be affected and the offspring who will be affected that will be boy only okay so all these were all about the basics we uh, or the expected pattern how we analyze the pedigree now move to some of the questions related with the probability let's discuss about the probability problem related with the pedigree analysis so here question is that in this case the disease is the autosomal recessive one it means the progeny having the recessive homozygous state will be affected one only it means here number 2 of 2 second generation 3 4 5 of third generation and 1 of four generations are affected or having the process having the genotype of small a small a or homozygous recessive one so here the question is that what is the probability that the mating between in the fourth generation four and five of spring will also be affected so in this condition what will happen let's discuss some of first some of the analysis regarding this uh, homozygous and recessive conditions so uh, the progeny here can be either in the heteros uh, sorry homozygous dominant one 
heterozygous condition and the homozygous recessive conditions okay so this three uh, can be possible in this pedigree now let's move to the first point so when both are here you can say that uh, one and two are phenotypically normal so it means as the disease express only in the homozygous recessive condition it means that is it means that one or two can be either in homozygous uh, dominant one are in the heterozygous condition so let's see first one condition when all both of them doing will be the in the homozygous dominant condition on that case it is obviously that none of the recessive alleles will pass through this to, to, to their generations now second condition can be there either of these two phenotypically normal uh, parent can have either uh, anyone may have either in the heterozygous condition or may other may have in the homozygous uh, dominant condition what will happen in this case when one will be in the heterozygous condition and other will be in the homozygous dominant condition on that case we will have capital a capital a capital a small a capital a capital a capital a and small a but here the condition is that one of the progeny by mating this one and two is affected so but uh, if one if either of the parents will be having either uh, homozygous condition and uh, other will be in the heterozygous condition then none of the progeny will be affected rather only one will one uh, two will be the carrier or the 50 percent will be the carrier and 50 percent will be in the homozygous dominant state now second condition can be that uh, be, the, uh, be there that both of the parent will be in the heterozygous condition now let's see what will happen when both of the parent will be in the heterozygous condition on that case what will happen here uh, here we will have uh, one normal two is the carrier and one is the affected one so as per this we can say that both of the parents are in the heterozygous condition first point is that both of the parents are in the heterozygous condition and second point we can conclude here is that the uh, recessive homozygous disease passes only to their generation uh, to the next generation only when both of the parents are in the heterozygous condition so to uh, to uh, the condition when the offspring of these two four and five will be affected is that uh, this uh, progeny suppose progeny uh, x will be uh, be affected only when both of these parent will be in the heterozygous condition so let's see what is the probability of these two in the heterozygous condition so uh, let's move to the uh, this uh, external uh, individual which is going to meet it which is not involved directly in the pedigree let's see what are the genotype of this uh, in number two one and number three one uh, parents so here as uh, uh, we have discussed here that when both of the parents will be affected only is the condition when their offspring will be affected so from this also we can analyze that uh, if one is unaffected one is unaffected it means that one will be in the heterozygous state and other will be in the homozygous recessive state so here the condition can also be uh, second condition can also be there as it is phenotypically normal then they can also exist in aa or in the dominant allele form and that condition what will happen when one or when both of the parents will be in the homozygous state and one parent will be in the homozygous dominant and other parent will be the homozygous recessive one so in that case what will happen none of the offspring will be affected rather all of the offspring here will be the carrier one so obviously from this data we can see that this parent is in the heterozygous state now move to the next one or the next generation number three and again analyze for the parent one here also uh, the one of the parent is affected uh, it means that uh, one of the sorry of spring is affected it means that here also it will be in the heterozygous state and it will be obviously in the heterozygous state because when we have made it it with the cap in the heterozygous female and affected male on that case uh, all are the 
capital A all are the in the heterozygous state and uh, 50% of the chances are there that the offspring will be affected. So here pedigree also uh, favors the condition. So uh, now what are what is the probability when these two heterozygous conditions were met together here is the condition when both of the parents are in the heterozygous stage then what is the probability that this offspring will be phenotypically normal so what what are the uh, how many progeny are phenotypically normal here this is the affected one so we will exclude it this so how many progeny are affected here one two three uh, sorry phenotypically normal one two three are the phenotypically normal total phenotypically normal progeny is three and what are the uh, what and how many progeny are in the heterozygous condition here only two progeny are in the heterozygous condition so the probability of having this four uh, fourth uh, individual or fourth offspring of generation four will be 2 by 3. So the probability of this 4 uh, having in the heterozygous condition is 2 by 4. Now move to this side. Here one of the parent or the female is here affected. It means it is having the at the small a small a genotype and the other may have the capital A capital A or a small a uh, cap or in the heterozygous conditions. So once we have uh, one we have a cross it with the here we have cross here when both were uh, in the heterozygous condition sorry homozygous condition and the uh, one of the parent was in the homozygous recessive condition then none of the offspring were affected because no one is having the small a small a genotype so 100% uh, chances was there that all will be uh, normal but carrier so or in the heterozygous conditions and here also we have seen there none of the progeny is affected but there is a hundred percent chances that all will be the carrier but if this progeny would be the small a or in the heterozygous condition then what would have been happen on that condition there must be some offspring which may be affected but as here none of the offspring are affected it means that this uh, parent are having is having uh, hetero, uh, homozygous dominant alleles so here what is the probability that when there will be the cross between homozygous recessive and homozygous dominant and the offspring will be heterozygous state uh, here we have seen there there is 100% or the 4 out of 4 will be in the heterozygous condition so what is the probability that this fifth one will be in the heterozygous condition it will be 4 out of 4 and what is the probability when both of these parents are heterozygous and this offspring will be affected here so let's come here again come here so when both of the parent here parent uh, female and here male are affected or uh, uh, sorry heterozygous condition on that condition one out of the four progeny are infected so here the probability that this x will be affected is that one by four so what we will get here we will get it will be one it will be two and we will get one sixth probability is there that this offspring will be affected from this pedigree analysis so once again come to the point uh, to find out the progeny being affected when the condition is that the affection is there when only when the chromosome is in the homozygous state recessive state okay gene is in the homozygous recessive state is only affected uh, this uh, offspring will only be affected when their parents will be in the heterozygous condition first point is that and uh, when uh, both of the parent will be in the heterozygous condition then the chances of affection uh, uh, chances of being diseased progeny is one fourth so we have taken the probability from this pedigree what is the probability that this will be heterozygous they are one of the parent will be heterozygous and what will be the progeny that uh, another parent will also be heterozygous and the what is the probability that the offspring will be also be affected so there we we are following the and rule that is when uh, the probability here we are finding the probability that 4 and 5 and this offspring x all uh, and which means uh, uh, we are finding the probability that uh, 4 and 5 are 
heterozygous and acts is in the homozygous recessive state or we can say disease one. So where we have used the multiplication because we are following the AND rule here, one fourth or uh, this one four by four was the one and we get finally one by six the probability of being this progeny be affected. So this was all in my video. Anyone having confusion in or unable to understand in English can switch to the Hindi language given in the description box and uh, the link. And, uh, and next time I will discuss uh, some more pro probability questions related to the genetics like the at least statement. And here uh, I have given these two uh, questions first you try by yourself and comment me in my comment channel the answer of these two uh, questions question number one and question two here it is the at least a uh, statement and here it's uh, similar to that of my i have discussed previous somewhat related to this so you can easily solve this uh, these two questions uh, take out your answers here and comment the the answer in my comment channel in the next video i will uh, solve these two questions so don't forget to subscribe and share my channel Till then, goodbye and have a nice day and all the best for your com coming examinations.